Hey everybody, it's Frozen, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about the electronics that I brought on my Appalachian Trail through hike. Now keep in mind, I was vlogging on my through hike, so some of these electronics are gonna be overboard for your standard through hiker. First up is my smartphone. It's a Google Pixel 3, and this little guy is what filmed the entire trip. Now I primarily filmed with the rear-facing camera because the camera back here has a much better stabilizer than the two front facing cameras. But I did use the front cameras a lot to take pictures of selfies of the group because I was able to zoom out the shot using the wide angle dual lens in this camera. And the phone worked absolutely incredible. I didn't have any issues with it. It had been living on the outside of my pack in the shoulder pocket. It had seen rain, it had seen hail, it had seen snow, very cold weather, very hot weather and it just held up like a beast. This thing pretty much looks brand new. Now what I did have on the phone was just a small glass, like a tempered glass screen protector, and I did drop it a couple times. One time the tempered glass screen protector actually cracked and I had to send myself a new one. So I was a big skeptic of the tempered glass screen protectors, but I do think they work, if not for just keeping your phone scratch free. I also had a little case on there with a little tripod that I could pull out and it worked out perfectly fine. For my phone provider, I used Verizon Unlimited and for the most part, Verizon handled excellent. I really had no complaints about it. There may have been maybe four or five days as we got further north where I didn't have service multiple days in a row, but that was very, very rare. More than likely, you could just climb the nearest mountain and you were summoning a lot in the northern states where you could at least get a text message or a short call out. It wasn't going to be spectacular quality, but anything from, I'd say, Vermont south, you pretty much had full coverage. Now, when I got back home from the AT, I did switch back to Google Fi, which is kind of Google's cellular provider, and it works perfectly fine, and it's much cheaper than Verizon Unlimited. If you're interested, there's more info in the description box below. So most of the time, I would just hold up my phone with my arm outstretched and film that way, but sometimes I wanted to set up a shot, and in those shots, I would use my Pedco UltraPod with my Manfrotto mount, and it would just kind of set up just like that and film me walking away or drinking coffee or all that boring stuff, whatever I wanted to do with it. And this also lived on the outside of my pack in a shoulder pocket. So it survived the weather and it still works great. I've had this tripod for years and it's very light, very useful. Now one final piece of gear that did live on the outside of my pack, so it went through a whole bunch of weather, were these Anchor Curve Bluetooth headphones. These were great. I used them for editing. I used them for music or really anything I wanted to do to watch movies when I was in town. And I didn't want to disturb anybody, so which is why I picked this up. It's kind of annoying to hear someone playing their music full blast on the trail through their phone or a Bluetooth speaker. So just do yourself a favor and just pick up one of these. They're 25 bucks. They're also in the video description if you want to check the link out. And these held up great now sometimes water would seep into the actual earbuds and it would take maybe a day or two for them to dry out but i never had these fail on me these were always just an excellent product and i highly highly recommend them i had a really really nice time listening to these things Let's talk about headlamps. So I really, really enjoyed my Nightcore NU25. It's lightweight. It has pretty much every mode that you can think of, including a red, a CRI, and a bright spotlight on it. It charges micro USB, and the battery is just incredible on this thing. I used this thing to night hike a few times, and it is very water resistant at IPX5 or 6 or something like that and it, it, it just handled perfectly. I never had a problem with this at all. So I highly recommend the Nightcore NU25. There's not many things that can beat this headlamp. Typically when you're through hiking, you're gonna be in town every three to six days because you have to replenish your food supply. It's also a good idea to do laundry and if you need it, stay in a hotel and get some town food and rest and recover. While I was in town, I used this 20,000 milliamp Anchor Power Core Speed PD. Now the PD stands for power delivery. Basically it's a USB series called a type C. So normally these things take about I don't know, 10 to 12 hours sometimes to charge something this big in a 20,000 with 
power delivery over 30 watt USB. This actually takes about four and a half hours, sometimes even less than that. So this was great. With this, I could charge my phone about four times. And if I was gonna do it again, I would actually get a bigger battery bank. Why, you might ask? Because I could really only stay out there for four days at a time while I was editing. Now, if you're not editing, then getting even this size is probably overkill. I suggest you know something like a, a 10,000 milliamp battery. And this should perfectly you know, suffice for a through hike that isn't being vlogged. But for me, I was filming about 30 to 40 minutes a day. Then I was editing, which took about 20 to 30 minutes every night. And then, you know, every other night I was coming out and having to export the video, which took an immense amount of battery power, not even counting the amount of battery power it took to upload on the trail. So I preferred uploading most of the time in town. Now, like I said, we're gonna get into a how I filmed, how I edited, and how I uploaded video in the next couple weeks, so be sure to check that out. But this is the battery bank that I use. This worked. In the 100 mile wilderness, I had to borrow a Trail Angel named Fresh Grounds Battery Bank just to survive the six days I was out there. Because like I said, this only lasted about four and a half to four days. But the, most of the trail, this is pretty much what I needed. As far as cables, I brought three. I brought a USB to micro USB, so your standard cable. I brought a USB-C to USB-C. This is how I charged my phone and the battery bank while I was out there. And then just in case I needed to charge multiple devices or someone was taking up an outlet, I could use their charger and do a USB to USB-C. And finally, I got an Aki wall charger. It has the flip out prongs so nothing would poke in your backpack or anything like that. And this would have USB-C and USB-A on it. And this worked out perfectly fine. Never had a problem with anything. As far as software, I used several applications on my phone. The first two are pretty similar. They are Lyft and Uber. These worked out great, just shuttling back and forth between the trail, or we could hitchhike. It just depended on how we felt that day. I also had an app called Appalachian Trail Weather. This was a great app, actually. It was pretty accurate, and how it worked was you just plugged in uh, your mileage marker that you were close to, or you could filter by states or even shelters. You chose the shelter that you were closest to, and that would give you the local weather for that area. It was pretty good. For social media, I used YouTube Creator Studio. That way I could manage my videos and answer comments in the same app. And I also used Instagram to post several pictures throughout each day. For editing, I used an app called KindMaster. It was a paid subscription, pretty cheap, and it worked out very well. Like I said, in the next couple weeks, I'm gonna do a video on KindMaster and how I filmed and edited. For thumbnails, I created everything with Snapseed, which is a free tool that you can do. It's an image processing unit. You can add text. It's actually pretty cool. I also used an app called Gut Hooks, which I really, really highly recommend. This thing was amazing on the trail, and after a certain point on my through hike, this was the only app I used for GPS and trail data. I also had the AWOL guide for trail information and you know just town resupply information, but I kind of shied away from using it. I was just using gut hooks and kind of figuring everything else there. I still recommend through hikers do purchase both the AWOL guide and the gut hook app for information on their through hike. But what I would tell you is for you know just my purposes, I thought the PDF version of the AWOL guide was fine. I saw plenty of people carrying the books and I didn't really see a use. On top of you know just being able to have it digitally and it not weigh a ton in your pack, you can also call people right from the AWOL guide in the PDF because everything's kind of like a hyperlink to your phone. And you could also see GPS data and transfer that into Google Maps. You could also copy text. Just a slew of cool things you can do in the PDF versus the book version. So guys, that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing, give it a like and a share. If you have any questions, obviously leave them in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I'm Frozen and thanks for watching.